no break. The, the screen breaks so easy. What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. I don't know what is going on. Girl, there's this post on the neighborhood talk. What's up? We back. We back. I'm trying to zip. Should I zip my jacket up? I'm trying to think. Yeah. What you looking at? You nosy. Get out my face, nigga. Especially your bitches in the fucking passenger seat. The fuck you looking at, nigga? Do y'all be telling that to the niggas? Or do you y'all be feeling good because he got a bitch in the car and he looking at you? Or do you be telling him, turn your face around, look at somebody else, ho. <laughs> I got shit to do with this. Leave me out of it. You feel me? So this was a, a post on on the neighborhood talk. And it's so weird because I think y'all just be saying anything. I'm a, when we get to the thing, I just saved it. It's the first thing I saw. So I was like, we're going to talk about the first thing I see. It says, neighbors, do y'all agree? Hold on, I'm going to read it to you. Oh, that, that feels so good. I haven't tried the lavender matcha. I'm going to try the lavender matcha with oat milk. They say it tastes like Fruit Loop cereal. And lavender, it tastes so good. Lavender, I had some lavender almond milk. It's just like, it tastes really good. Is that a drive through Starbucks over there? I'm going to go where I know. I'm going to go where I go. All these pregnancy announcements and no wedding announcements. I truly hate that for everyone. Let's bring monogamy and nuclear families back. Thank you. No, you sound like an agent. Monogamy is a lie, right? You guys are agreeing to things that are unnatural to you. You are agreeing to a social structure. It is not natural to be monogamous. I don't give a damn what y'all say. It's natural for me. No, girl, you've agreed to it and you have a, you said it works for you, but it's not a natural. You have decided as a human, you are going to agree with another person to monogamy. You're going to agree to an unnatural state of relating to each other period nuclear families get that shit out of here as well the nuclear family actually blocks the woman and isolates the woman from a community of women that leads to all types of abuse whatever the abuse looks like so deconstruct and dismantle the nuclear nuclear family you believing in love monogamy and nuclear family puts you in positions to be harmed if you haven't noticed the average marriage lasts eight years okay a, ch a child uh, up to they to they grow up is 18 years your children are lasting longer than your marriages okay the nuclear family is a goddamn trap Okay, hold on a second. The origin of the nuclear family. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it. So y'all can see how it's first made up. It's not natural. They're literally trying to get you all to agree to an unnatural state of relating to male humans when their only purpose is to, and limited, is to provide sperm. That's it. You're not supposed to get sperm from any old body. Any old body should not be able to, to release their sperm, their thousands of sperm, in an effort to have a du duplicate his DNA. Hold on. Let's see when all these the goddamn ads go away. Let's listen. This is PBS. Well, familiar with the image of the American nuclear family with two parents, a couple of kids, and a loyal canine companion, but when did we start thinking of the nuclear family as the most natural one? <laughs> So with Thanksgiving coming up, we thought it would be fun to talk about family. It's safe to say that most of us know more than a few families that don't fit into the typical nuclear family mold. 
Yet despite this diversity, if asked to describe a prototype of the American family, a lot of us will still recall images more reminiscent of Leave it to Beaver than anything we've witnessed in real life. But if all of us can imagine or know families of all shapes, sizes, and styles, then why does the expression nuclear family still get lobbied around to represent some sort of idealized unit? Well, before we dive into the incongruous history of the family structure with the same name as the center of an atom, we should ask ourselves, what is the history of family structures before the idea of the nuclear family became the shorthand for normal? So this answer varies based on time period, region, and culture. Kinship, or the recognition of relationships between people within the same community or biological family plays a huge role in how we define our family structure. And yes, everyone all over the world has a biological ancestry, but who and what we call our familiar relations is not that cut and dry. In the Iroquois system, your father's brothers were also your father, and your mother's sisters were also your mother. In the Kaw Nation kinship system, your mother's brother's daughter, who we would call your cousin, is also called your mother. And in the matrilineal Majo culture in northern China, women freely chose their partners, and who your biological father is is not considered very important at all. Frequently, your biological... So just in that small piece of information, you can see what you believe is quote-unquote normal is some shit that was made up. Because if it was normal, then everybody would be participating. It would be the template for how family structure should look. And it's not. The nuclear family isolates the woman and creates an environment where the man and the woman are now cohabitating and they should not be. That's the truth about it. So while you're over here pushing some kind of idea agent smith candace owens and you all the rest of the fools like you your agent smith you're trying to get everyone to agree to some white male heterosexual christian thin ideologies you're doing the most home girl As you can see, there's a line. Just chill out on the curve. So just in that small moment, it's only been a minute and 38 seconds into this video. And she has explained to you how in other cultures, this is what nuclear looks like. Here we go father wouldn't even live with you, and your mother's brothers often fill in the role. In the Omajo culture in northern China, women freely chose their partners, and who your biological father is is not considered very important at all. Frequently, your biological father wouldn't even live with you, and your mother's brothers often fill in the role of the father figure. Plus, all of this is frequently even more complicated by language barriers. So, if you think your family structure is weird, trust me, it's not. But in terms of European history, from the 1500s until the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, it was common for peasants and families in northern and central Europe to live in two generational households consisting of the parents as the older generation in charge of the family and the children as the second generation. That was also because kids were a big part of the economic structure of the household, working with their parents to sustain the family's livelihood. At any given point in time, only less than 10% of these peasant families lived intergenerationally, in part because a lot of the grandparents didn't live long enough to make this a reality. And by the end of the Middle Ages, most families in those regions were in the traditional nuclear format, owing in part. So if you understood history and anthropology, you will see that what you are trying and judging people on is fake. It's not real. You tr And the reason why it's structured like this is so that more men can have access to you fools looking for somebody to fulfill a fantastical delusion. If y'all don't see that and then you run around trying to make women feel a certain way by choosing themselves and their children, there's no way in the world you're going to tell me by being a solo parent, choosing not to be in relationship with the boy's father, somehow leaves a stain on me absolutely not y'all gotta stop letting these people tell you Ooh, being a baby mama is somehow an insult to you if i told you once i told you twice this motherfucker is upside down and everything that is that means something 
They tell you it doesn't mean anything. They tell you that if you don't have a man next to you, you are somehow the bane of the community's existence. And that is a lie. And I've told people over and over, oh, you want the father in the home. If the father and the mother aren't getting along, why the fuck is the father in the home? So he can teach the children some kind of weird way on relating to the mother? No. You can, you're not going to stigmatize someone just because they chose themselves and the safety of their children and chose to have a home and live in a home of peace and tranquility my relationship to the to the father of the son has nothing to do with the relationship between the father and the child if the father if, if the father does not put in the effort to maintain and cultivate and nurture a relationship with his offspring, that's his goddamn problem. Leave me out of it. Don't tell me that something is wrong with the way my children are, are growing up in their home when they're growing up with consequence, structure, discipline. The man doesn't need to be there. This idea that a man needs to be somewhere in order to be a part of his child's life and needs to be close to the mother terrorizing her ass is a goddamn lie stop letting these people make you feel ashamed for choosing yourself yes i'm a solo parent i'm a mother raising children and the father is wherever the hell he wants to be as it relates to the children but as it relates to me i don't need them around my ass for me to raise my children and they don't need him either as a matter of fact history shows that's that him not being in the home is actually normal the only thing that's not normal is the way that you have cut off the women in your community right because once you get married you got to cut off all the women in the community because you've also been trained that every man wants a woman every woman wants a man every man wants a woman yeah every man wants a woman yeah for him and everything just go hang doing it alone doing our own thing yeah they want to get you alone with a weird ass volatile man and put him in, and then and then have you expecting things out of him you're supposed to protect and provide for me no the fuck he's not y'all living in an upside down world and you're going to end when you unlearn these things, you are going to have to release men from your expectations of the, how they show up in the world. You're going to have to release them from this, this idea that they're supposed to protect and provide for you if they're in relationship with you. Because you, I, I know that you've acknowledged and understand that a man is not going to protect and provide for you if he has no relationship to you. And when he does have relationship to you, it's iffy. Because the intimate partner violence rates shows me that the person, the persons that you are choosing to protect and provide for you are harming you. So that's a lie. So that so you're putting these men in these situations. Patriarchy has you expecting men to do these things for you, and that is not their role. And and then and then you you're still in the mind. Well, if I release them from that expectation. What are they here for? What are they useful for? Well, that's something you're going to have to figure out. And that's something that men are going to have to figure out because you're not needed. Y'all done fucked up when you gave women rights. You fucked up. Because now a woman has no need for a man. If she wants a man, he's going to be a he's going to be a nice to have around. But you want the men to be nice to have around and be monogamous. That's unnatural. It's natural for me. No, it's not, girl. You've just agreed to this structure and said, I want monogamy. And so the men will lie to you and promise you monogamy just to get access to you. They'll stay with you a couple of years and then start giving your ass the blues. So you're not going to shame women and say you don't see enough weddings. No, no, because the wedding is a goddamn lie. The wedding is a lie. The shit is made up. You want to put people in nuclear families. Let's finish listening. Let's finish listening to her. Here we go. To the influence of the Christian church sanctioned monogamy. 
By contrast, in the same periods in Eastern and Southern Europe, intergenerational living was much more common, with several generations of the family all living within the same household. But not everyone thought the nuclear family was ideal. In the 19th century, researchers who were studying family structures theorized that nuclear families they observed in manufacturing regions of Western Europe and in England might not be the best, since once children left to form their own families, it left elder parents alone. There are also other structures that were practiced, such as conjugal families or families that were connected through marriage, and consanguineal families, families that are connected by their common bloodline. But another big part of how families were defined centered on the question of marriage. Although there are more contemporary notions that marriage are about love, fidelity, building a life together, and making cute centerpieces out of mason jars, that wasn't always the case. Marriage is an ancient custom dating back thousands of years, and evidence shows that marriage customs have varied as widely as family structures. According to Stephanie Kuhn's author of Marriage, A History, a lot of those marriages were more about family connections than love. What marriage had in common was that it really wasn't about the relationship between the man and the woman. It was a way of getting in-laws, of making alliances, and expanding the family labor force. Now romantic. And marriage includes a laundry list of options, like arranged marriages, where families choose their children's spouse, or polygamy, where there are multiple marriages within one defined group. That includes both polygamy, or one man with multiple wives, and polyandry, or one woman with multiple husbands. And although polygamy is the more commonly known practice, accounts of polyandry exist in approximately 53 societies around the world, such as Tibet. Although religious marriages have a long history, as centuries have passed, the state has played a larger and larger role in regulating marriage practices. So a marriage can have a religious ceremony, a civil ceremony, or a combination of both. And it wasn't until the last 250 years or so that the idea that marriages should be love matches started gaining traction. So we've established that families have lots of- 250 years old, getting married for love. And they have you y'all out here fucking going nuts, nuts nuts do you hear me on some shit that is that's what i'm saying and then it's it's fairly new to to society but it's very old and you see that it doesn't work that's what i'm saying it's like that's when when you tell people oh we want the man to be this and that those structures are not working how many more times do you have to see humans in this situation to know that it doesn't work and you're trying to do something that is fairly new and you're they're even shaming you for it the man doesn't have to be in the home you should be cultivating your relation you y'all should be finding a man with good pedigree okay figuring it out but y'all want to be in relationships that's where y'all get it fucked up y'all believe that because you exist you deserve to be in a relationship to someone. You deserve it. And you deserve for that person to be um, monogamous to you. And you de and that person is, is deserved to, they, you deserve that person to be honorable to you for their entire life. Not change nothing, not look at another human being, not love another person. You want them confined and restricted to only you. And by and large, it is not working, especially if you are designing it in a way that you want the onlookers to approve. If you're things that work, if you actually, if they told you the truth, you would hear that it is not designed at all the way that society wants your marriage to be designed. When you, when you peer into successful relationships, their relationships are lasting because they, de they designed it for themselves. Man and woman, it ain't no Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve and all that other dumb shit. You're only, the male and female are only to come together to procreate. You don't have to be married. You don't have to be straight. You don't have to be cis. You don't. None of that stuff means anything to a male and a female sperm and an egg coming together. Everything outside of that means nothing. So you shouldn't even allow anyone. See, society says this is what it should be. But you need to go outside of what society says because 
uh, um, what society is not telling you and what you're failing to do is actually do the research to see that the average marriage only lasts eight years. So the way that they've marketed this idea of doing something with one person forever, it's unrealistic and it's unnatural. And you are causing yourself and other people around you needless suffering by trying to mimic something that is grossly unnatural. The nuclear family is a goddamn trap for women. And it allows men who have no, who should not, the majority of men should not have access to the majority of women. And that's the truth. But y'all think there's somebody for everybody. That's what y'all think. Y'all also think, and if there's somebody for everybody, the math is not mathing, number one. Number two, you're trying to, you, first you believe everybody belongs in a relationship. Then you believe that that person should be monogamous to you for the rest of their life. Even though studies have shown that animals, there's a very few group of animals on this earth who are monogamous. And a human being is not one of them. Marriages, they're, they're not as valuable if they only if they only last eight years and but and when you and when you dissolve the business it ain't it's not bringing in what you put into it a lot of y'all when y'all get a divorce and you do the and you do your accounts payable and accounts receivable on your marriage you're at a loss and I don't give a fuck what you say it's you're you're having a loss your your if your marriage is not bringing in a return. When y'all do your taxes, hello, there's something wrong. Y'all don't want to y'all don't want to talk about marriage as a business. Why? Because then you'd actually see that on paper this shit doesn't make sense and on paper I should not be participating in something that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's try this little this lavender matcha little fun thing that they have going on. Yeah, that's what we want. Hmm, ice too. Hmm. What time is it? 9.17. They didn't built a whole little house out here. Hi, may I have a grande ice lavender cream oat milk matcha? Ooh, that sounds so fun. What's that? Grande. Okay. And can I, um, can you not... You guys only have those sippy cup tops, huh? Uh, like the one that has like a big hole? Yeah, I don't want that one. Can you yeah, tell them to put something else on there? Yeah, because that one's yeah, like... Anything else? And then uh, cheese danish warm. Okay. That's all. Gotcha. It's going to be 9 today. All right. Thank you. Come on, 990. That's the shit y'all don't want to talk about because th th and that's that's the responsibility that you have. Once you know, then you have a responsibility. If you're still running around like and it's like you think that I'm being cynical, but what I'm actually doing is literally breaking up your social your socialized brain. We're we're defragmenting a socialized brain. And we're trying to give you a new operating system and a lot of y'all are resistant to being uploaded with new information in order to operate in a more efficient way. You are literally trying to operate on old operating systems and wondering why your shit is always buffering. You're wondering why the shit don't work. You're wondering why it doesn't work in conjunction with other new programs. You're trying to put an old program into an updated system and it's not working and you have generations of evidence to show you that and so what do you do no you still in your mind believe that if there's somebody out there for you that's one you believe and that person is going to be your life partner that's two and you just keep having to lie to yourself then you make people feel bad for actually going against their socialized conditioning by rejecting marriage and still desiring children how dare you 
How dare you not have a center of man to have a man around you? You are the bane of this community because there's no man around you helping you to raise your child. What? And somehow you need to have this man who may or may not have caused you a lot of stress. And so in order to maintain the community, you need to keep that man around you. Otherwise, you just a baby mama or you just a single mama. And you you can't be that in this community. When in other communities, the men leave. It is, it's okay for the man not to be in the home. It still does not negate his responsibility to his child. Because you do, you do live in a state where it says this now is a liability to the partnership that you've created. And you need to pay on this liability until it turns, it, the term is 18 years. And that's how long you have. And this is going to be your liability. Make sure you invest into the liability because when it gets a certain age and you no longer have to invest in it, hope you see a return on it. Let's get our lavender matcha and our cheese danish. And I've been trying to log into my rewards thing and it keeps telling me that I have, I have the right email, but it keeps telling me I changed my password and it keeps telling me I have the wrong password. It just keeps telling me I have the wrong password. I change it to put it to the new password. Ever since I updated this phone, my, my, my Starbucks app has not been working. I, like I said, I log in, I use the password that I have. It says it's a, the password doesn't work. Then I change the password, put in the new you know, put it in with the new password, still doesn't work. Clear my cash, clear all my cookies, come back, still doesn't work. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with the Starbucks app. So I ain't got time. I ain't got time to figure it out either. We should finish listening to her while we're um getting our food and our and our um beverage. Hold on. So you can see how unnatural this shit is that y'all be trying to and then, and then the crazy part is it's so unnatural and then you, you, you enforce it and you, and you look, you look down on people cause they're not following this weird ass societal programming. Thank you. Can I have a small straw? Thank you. Yeah, that sippy cup shit that we having, bitch. I'm not eight. I'm not fucking four years old, bitch. Give me a regular damn top on my damn thing. I'm not, this is not a sippy cup, okay? Bitch, I got teeth. <laughs> Girl. They really built a whole little house right up here. I'm, I'm waiting for the people to come tell them to move. They really built a little house right there. Can you see it? You see it? Okay, let's see what this is giving. Some cold foam lavender at the top of it. It does taste like it does it tastes like cereal milk. It does. It does taste like cereal milk. I'm not getting the lavender. I need a little bit more lavender in here, honey. Yeah, I'm not getting the lavender. It's just matcha. It's, it's, it's giving me matcha. But if it's a lavender in here, it, lavender is good for, it's a good calming herb, you know. Lavender is good. Honey, I'll put organic lavender. I, I um grind that up with my reefer. For my e for my evening reefer joint, mm -hmm. grind, get you some organic um lavender, grind it up with your reefer, honey. Mix it together. Mm -hmm. It's giving relaxation, some lavender and some chamomile. Mm -hmm. It's giving relaxation. Trust me. Try it. Thank me later, girl. 
But yeah, this is this is just giving me oat milk matcha. I'm not tasting the lavender. I would really like a, I would really like to taste the lavender. I would like to taste it because lavender tastes good. It's just a, like like that flowery. It's like a flowery, and you could taste it. You it tastes like a flower. This is just giving me green tea matcha. It's still good though. Let's finish listening to her. Of different shapes, sizes, and customs. Let me go back. Although religious bit. marriages have a long history, as centuries have passed, the state has played a larger and larger role in regulating marriage practices. I can take a so, a marriage can have a religious ceremony, a civil ceremony, or a combination of both. And it wasn't okay. until the last 250 years or so that the idea that marriages should be love matches started gaining traction. So, we've established that families have lots of different shapes, sizes, and customs. So, that brings us to our next question When did the nuclear family become shorthand? for the American household. Well, the use of the specific phrase nuclear family in English can be dated these, but as the evidence shows, the concept or form of the nuclear family wasn't exactly new. But in the 1950s US, the Cold War was accompanied by an economic boom, the growth of suburban developments on the outskirts of major cities, and a growth in the middle class and a population surge, all of which encouraged the nuclear family. But it wasn't inherently a natural development. PSAs and how-to videos broadcast across the country were specifically designed to teach families how to behave appropriately Program. and what to do if they were going to achieve this stylized ideal. But these realities Program. were marked heavily by divisions of class and race, as the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s was occurring simultaneously. So even though in the 1960s, some historians and sociologists interested in family structures were concluding that nuclear families were the only widely spread version of the family, the contemporary reality for many American families differed greatly from the ones presented in popular media. <coughs> but I mean, if even the break bunch was blended, then that leads us to asking our final question. Is the nuclear family really the most popular form in the U.S.? And if not, what kind of families are out there? Well, let's look at the data. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, in 2012, 66% of households were family households, down from 81% in 1970. And in those same years, married couples with children under 18 dropped from 40% to 20%. Black and Latino children were more likely to live in single-parent households, and households with only one person jumped from 17% to 27%. So it seems that while married couples with kids still describes a substantial number of families in the U.S., that number is shifting every day. But in the last 100 years, marriages and families have continued to evolve, at least in regards to the types of unions becoming legally recognized and visible in the popular consciousness. The political and legal system of the region can determine the types of marriages recognized by law which in turn impacts the type of families that are most visible. In 1967, the Supreme Court case of Loving v. Virginia struck down all laws prohibiting interracial marriage in the United States. And in 2015, Obergefell v. Hodge ruled that laws against same-sex marriage in the U.S. were unconstitutional. But families also exist outside of legal and state recognition, and that's not a new phenomenon. In ancient Greece, alumni was a term for children who were fostered by another family. And there's legal precedent for adoption dating back to the Code of Hammurabi in the 18th century BC. And today, there are over a quarter of a million adoptions worldwide every year. So clearly, blood ties, marriage, and children aren't the only ways that family can be defined. So how does it all add up? Well, marriages, families, and kinship groups have been going strong for thousands of years in almost every configuration that we can think of. And that includes the nuclear family. But while the image of the nuclear family is often held up as the ideal and only form a family can take, whether or not that's true seems to vary by social group and region. But as we gear up for the holidays and think about passing various side dishes to members of our own family with both joy and maybe a little bit of caution, it's important to remember whatever form, shape, or size it takes, we have the power to define what family should look like for ourselves. So what do you think? Any funny family? Period. So what you are trying to get people to fall in line with doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hold on. I'm going to take a picture of this. I want to hear, I'm going to read some of the comments. I said, somebody said, hmm, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I put the average marriage last eight, eight years. Keep it, pack it up, sell it somewhere else. You can't put a stigma on a baby mama with a phrase that means you had enough sense to get away from the man, get away, get that man away from you and your precious child. F them niggas. 
bring back minding y'all fucking business. If it's not affecting me personally, I don't give a fuck what nobody do. Marriage don't keep no man either, honey. Somebody said it's not a flex. It is not a flex being a baby mama and not a wife. Bring back an importance of marriage. I don't want to see any, uh, oh, you can be married and still be a baby mama or husband still cheat, blah, blah. Two people who understand the importance of marriage don't have those problems. Marriage is not supposed to be easy. The idea that you even think that that partnering with somebody is not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be easy. Why would you even who in their right mind invest in a partnership that is not going to be easy girl what you sound dumb so if i don't get married i can't have kids exactly laughs and happily married some of y'all need to be off the internet and go touch grass married folks are everywhere bring it back you mean from when granddaddy had a whole nother family around the corner just because you're legally bound to someone doesn't make them a better partner in parenthood though the goal is to choose a part a parent partner wisely regardless of your marital status i love the, the parent partner right i'm choosing someone to help par parent a child not someone to be my my romantic partner i think if you approached it that way one that's going to take a lot of the men out of the pool and that's what they don't want they want every man to feel like he has an opportunity to duplicate his dna and if you are being programmed to only choose viable dna or a viable person to replicate his dna then that is naturally going to eliminate gaggles of men and we can't have a bunch of men without the opportunity to duplicate their dna because their sole purpose here is to survive we know we could keep reproducing we already know that's where we're from we're from a place of abundance they're from a place of lack and survival they need you to operate like that too and they need you to operate like that when it comes to them and have you running around trying to find a unicorn to marry and then also expect all these other things from them <clears throat> one i heard this white woman say it just because you think you're deserving of something doesn't automatic automatically make it available to you did you hear what I said? Just because you believe that you are deserving of something doesn't make it automatically available to you. And that's something you're going to have to reconcile. And I'm not trying to tell you it's doom and gloom. I'm just trying to say, bitch, break this fantasy up and, uh, and operate from a logical brain and stop trying to feel like you need to be in love with somebody that you ha are having a child with. Oh, this child was made out of love. No, bitch, it was made out of a sperm and an egg. Okay, let's go. You were supposed to be here and this is the vessel that you chose. This is the earth family that you chose. And your family structure, trying to say nuclear, no. I grew up in a multi-generational home. I think that's actually the best place for children to be raised where there's multiple adults, multiple adults of different generations that to me is the best not one man one woman if it's two women if it's two men if it's two cis people if it's two trans people whatever the fuck it doesn't matter and this idea well we need marriage so that we could keep repopulating the earth well what how did the fucking earth get populated in the first fucking place before they even even had the idea of what a marriage was before they even started practicing creating a ceremony where two people come together and decide they're going to live together for however long they can tolerate each other. Everything that you've been sold, it's like literally marketed. The diamonds that you buy, the, the billion, how, how, how much is the wedding industry? It is to their benefit. You, I need for you to consume this idea and try to replicate it. And then if you don't, if it doesn't work out with one, I need you to try it again. And if it doesn't work out with that person, I need you to keep trying it and keep trying it and keep trying it and consume and consume and spin and spin. I need you to keep doing that. I need for you to do that. I need for you to believe that you deserve a person. 
I need for you to believe that and that person is going to be monogamous to you. I need for you to believe that. I need for you to, it's important for you to believe that. Hold on, I also want you to find, I want to find this for you. I want to let you listen to this. I want you to listen to this. Hold on. Here we are. That we need to grieve the lack of available quality partners. No amount of believing or deserve better summons them. Grieving is not just having a sad. It's a, it's a far more complex process. I see a lot of us, a lot of women, in those first two stages of Keebler Rossman, stages of grief which is an imperfect model, but I think it can be useful. The first two stages are denying. This isn't happening. I'm in denial of the fact that something is no longer here for me. That person is gone. The you know, lack of available healthy partners is not here. We don't want that to be true. So we go into denial about that. And the second part is bargaining. Bargaining is like, okay, well, I can fix it. There's something I can do to change that. And I see a lot of women in the bargaining stage bargaining stage, I think, looks like, well, why is that? Let's figure out. Let's fix them in. Let's solve this problem somehow. And we cannot solve this problem because this men have to choose to solve this problem. This problem is entirely outside of our control. The next two stages, after we come to terms with the fact that, oh, shit, this is, this is happening, and we're not trying to change that anymore, is anger and sadness. You might feel a lot of uncomfortable feelings about how this is our reality right now. But then that last stage is acceptance. What does life look like? If this is not available, what does what does a meaningful, rich life look like outside of partnering with men? Here is an exercise that I want to encourage you to do with me right now. I want you to imagine that you go to bed tonight, you wake up tomorrow morning, all of this is head men have just vanished overnight. And after a sigh of collective relief that we can all breathe, because now we feel safe and so we feel never safe. Felt safe before, I want you to consider what would you orient your life around if partnership is off the table? What what would you orient your life around if partnership was off the table? That's the one thing. It's not the the man. Number one, the men aren't going to change. It's I keep trying to tell you all that because I want you to understand the same thing. The same reason why white people are not going to change. Men are not going to change. White people are not going to change their relationship to racism because it benefits them. They're not going to speak out loud about it. They're going to deny that it exists or that it no longer ex exists. It's where post race racial era or whatever the fuck they want you to believe. They have to deny it, even though they benefit from it. They have to deny it, even though they benefit from it. Because once you acknowledge that it's real, then you are now responsible for how you show up. That's what a lot of y'all don't want to do is hold the responsibility. Again, also, when you are dismantling the way men are, we live in a patriarchy. They are not going to change. Women, like what do you call new fools? They're always going to exist. So men are always going to have a supply. It's now teaching women, one, you may not even be here to be in a relationship with someone. If you want to relate to someone, understand that that's not something that's going to last for your life. What they've sold you, this lifelong monogamous commitment to somebody, that is not real. You need to have a more realistic approach to that. You cannot wait for these men to get it together. They are not going to get it together. It has been generations, my love. They're not going to get it together. They benefit from this system. Why would they admit that it exists? How many times do you hear a black man say, this is a, a matriarchy? No, just because women are leading the homes in this society doesn't mean that you are in a, pa in a matriarchy. Just because more like ethnic homes, um, cult or the cultures, it, it is typically a matriarchy. Once the grandmother dies, it's a wrap. Grandpa dies, the, everybody keeps it moving. Once the grandmother dies, the whole damn family breaks up because she's really the one holding the family together. 
And everybody knows that and still say that the men are the head of the household. Why? Because you have a Bible that's programming you on Sunday to believe these things. And that's also by design. But again, once you admit that these things are occurring in this system, then you have you are responsible, right? Once you've accounted for and you've taken accountability for what's going on in this motherfucker, now you are now it's your responsibility to respond. How are you going to show up now that you know that you may not be here to be partnered with somebody? You, you're, you don't, just because you think you deserve a lifelong monogamous partner doesn't mean that he's going to become available to you. No matter how many goddamn damn times you write it in a journal, no matter how many goddamn candles you light, no how many goddamn fucking, um, fucking pubic hair you fucking bury in the backyard. I don't know what the fuck kind of spells y'all be doing on these niggas, but whatever the fuck kind of love spell you got going on so these men can love you, hang it up. The men are not going to change. They don't have a reason to change. So it's your responsibility to acknowledge that the things that you believe that you deserve, one, you believe you deserve them based on a social programming. So it's not even, you don't even deserve that. It's not even something that you, it's not even something to deserve. It's not even something to deserve. Look at the big dogs. Bring back nuclear families. No, no, no. If that works for you, that's fine. But we've seen evidence that it actually doesn't work. We, we have generational evidence, statistical evidence that shows this particular template does not work. In addition to that, once you acknowledge that, you are going to have to release men from the responsibility of protecting and providing for you. And you're going to have to decide how you relate to men, knowing that they're never going to change. Knowing that, hey, you know what, instead of trying to relate to men in a romantic, intimate way, maybe I will have more successful relationships with men if I relate to them on a platonic level. And they know right off the bat, you, we can be friends and not the kind of friends to where you think you could see an opening door because I don't date men. I don't have romantic, intimate partner relationships with men. I have platonic relationships with men, friendships with men. I don't have romantic partnership. So if you think this is one of those games where you, when, once you see the door open, you can slide your way in there and, and, and possibly face the nation. Absolutely not. There is a velvet rope around the podium. There ain't nobody just getting up and standing up and tapping on the mic. Absolutely not. Ain't nobody. Yeah, there's a velvet rope around the podium where the mic is. So where you could stand up and tap on the mic and face the nation, can't, can't everybody stand up to the podium? You may not even have the qualifications or the lexicon to stand up and speak to the nation. So. If you want to be around me and be in relationship with me, it's going to be on a platonic level. There will never be an opening for you. And you have to let the niggas know. And even if you let them know like that, they still in their mind, oh, I'm I'm a, I'm a break her down one day. I, I'm going to get close to the pussy one day. No, you're not. So you can have relationships with men. They don't have to be romantic. If you're afraid, like, oh, I got to cut all the men off him. You know, you don't. Or you can decide, I mean, you, you'd have to get over your, your, um, your phobias. Cause a lot of y'all have a lot of uh, irrational fears around, like I said, I don't, I don't want to be like the lady said in the thing, imagine your life waking up and there's no cishet men around. Take a collective sigh of relief that we are now safe. Ain't that crazy? That was a white woman. That's crazy. Take a collective sigh of relief because we are now all safe. You woke up one morning and all the sit hat men are gone. Trans men are still here, right? Trans women are still here, right? Gay men are still here. Gay, uh, gay uh, cis gay men are still here. But cisgender heterosexual men, meaning that you are you um, identify with your, your gender assignment at birth and you claim to be heterosexual, get your ass up out of here. You're volatile. You're disagreeable. You're not safe to be around. 
And when you and when you and when you decide to acknowledge that just because you exist doesn't mean that a woman is here for your partnership. She did not come from your rib. That is a lie. Civilization did not come from a man. Your God is not a he. When you start dismantling all that shit and breaking up all that shit, you will see how men, do, they're not prioritizing your life anymore. You've been trained from the very beginning to prioritize romantic relationships. You haven't even been taught to prioritize your relationships with other girls to women. You haven't. That's something that's going to have to change. And I love the fact that Gen Z are not really concerned about the things that Gen X and the silent generation and the baby boomers were dealing with and older millennials and the older Gen X. I'm lucky to be a Gen X that did not lean into her socialization or her programming. I don't even know what it feels like to desire a partner to spend the rest of my life. I I, I don't understand. It's something that I, I just don't understand. And I've never understood it, even though I part unconsciously participated in it. I was participating in a system that I, I knew consciously, I don't even want to be involved in this. This is, doesn't even make sense. I like to do things that make sense. This does not make sense. And then you're showing me evidence. And then I was glad to come to the awareness that, you know what? The way that men are socialized, the, the way that they're socialized, to relate to women is not conducive to my well-being. I'm not asking them to change. I'm going to be the one to change. Don't change. Keep doing what you're doing because obviously it's working for you. You're not being cut off from any vagina or nothing. The women keep lining up. Just keep being who you are. I'm going to be the one to change. You have to be the one to change. And prioritizing you before anything else. And if that looks like misandry to you, then so be it. Call, call it misandry if you want to. If centering myself and prioritizing my needs and prioritizing platonic relationships over romantic relationships looks like a hatred of men to you, then so be it. But I'm here down here to let y'all know that you're not alone because I know that I'm not the only one who felt like this from, from her 20, from even elementary school. You have to really, and in order to unlearn this shit, you have to analyze how you've always showed up. When you thought, when the minute you thought you li started liking boys, you got to realize what was the programming happening. You literally have to step outside of yourself and analyze and go back and analyze that little girl, how she was relating to boys in elementary school, high school. Did boys like her? Did she go up to boys? Were the boys always on her? What, did, what was she, how was she relating when she finally got into a relationship? Was she codependent? She, was she dealing with rejection or abandonment issues? All of that. Does I, all of a sudden now you've pictured your your marriage, even though before you understood the pathology of a man. Now you've grown up. Now they told you, oh, you have to have a baby by a certain time, but you can't have a baby unless you're married because socially that's unacceptable. But I see so many people who are having babies and they're not married and they're making fun of them. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be made fun of by my community. So I need to go out and find a man, but I need to find a man who I love, right? And that man also has to be monogamous, okay? And then that man, and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with that man too, okay? I gotta go find this guy, but I have to find him at a certain amount of time because by the time I turn 40, it's gonna be too late to have a baby. By the time I turn 35, I hear other men saying that, that I'm, I hit the wall by the time I'm 35, so I need to hurry up and find somebody. Do you see? how your eyes get wound up and how you can end up with any old body and how these men also know how you've been programmed and they know in order to get a maid, mule, a mattress, and a muse, a manager, a medic, a mother, and to get all these things out of this woman, all I got to do is promise her monogamy and tell her I love her. That's all I need to do. Okay, good. And have a little bit of money. Then when I get into the marriage, she's doing everything. She's managing everything. She's doing everything. 
but also telling the world that I'm the leader and I'm the protector and the provider. I really don't have to, do, and, and I don't have to be emotionally available to the offspring. I could just be here. And to the point that I could just be here and she even throws me in the faces of other women and I really don't even be doing shit. I just be here. And I give her a, my check, a half of my check. And she manages the house. She manages everything. She cooks, she cleans, mattress made, mule, medic, manager, muse. What else? The gag is y'all gonna have to release men from the same patriarchal restrictions that oppress you. Once you release them from oppressing you, you gotta release it from oppressing them. But the men, and, and ironically, and I heard uh, Princella saying that the way that I'm speaking, it looks like I'm against men, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm really trying to get y'all to, to break free from the expectation that's having y'all die by suicide at alarming rates. But because it, it inadvertently, because their whole existence is survival and to find a woman to duplicate their DNA, and the women just keep coming and coming and coming, I'm not going to reject what's actually oppressing me because I kind of benefit from it. And when I, that's my sole motivation is woman and, and DNA duplication and survival. I don't care that it's like pushing me down over here. As long as I'm getting my needs met and I can duplicate my DNA, I don't care that it's oppressing me. Because once you release your idea of how men show up, you're going to have to release the expectation that they're here to serve you in some way. And they're not. Release the expectation that you have of men around you, men related to you. They are not here for that. And you know, some parts it's like it's it's so unrealistic to not expect protection from a man who's related to you. But the intimate partner violence rates should be your evidence that that is not true. If it was natural for men to protect and provide, they wouldn't be in droves being upset that they have to pay child support. Because if it's natural for you to do it, then the defect would be the people who are not doing it. The defect would be the ones that, nigga, you ain't paying your child support? No, you wouldn't be sitting up in front of a presidential candidate asking for ways to get out of taking care of your children only to further feed and affirm the trope that you niggas don't want to take care of your children. Y'all sitting in front of that white man asking, how can I get out of taking care of my children? And all he's thinking is, these niggas will never fucking learn. These niggers will never learn. That's what he's really saying. So if it was actually natural for them to do, they wouldn't be speaking against if it was natural there would be more russell wilson's instead of more futures it would be natural but then you have these people at the same time you got drea out here saying hey listen i'm gonna go find me the most viable sperm and reproduce with that i don't have to be married to it as a matter of fact i don't want to be married to it and the girls are in shambles they don't even know how to react what am what are you talking about you're a person with a vagina you're supposed to crave and desire a monogamy you're supposed to crave and desire love a lifelong love you're supposed to waste your entire life looking for somebody to spend the rest of your life with even though the rest of your the previous relationships ain't last three years so you're just going from man to high Carly Red. You're just going from man to man to, to man to man. Carly Red is engaged again. That means nothing. There's no value there. No value. Every, uh, every motherfucker you come in contact with is a potential husband. Absolutely not. That's a lie. The same way they tell you every woman ain't a wife. Every nigga ain't a husband. But y'all y'all believe that he has potential to be something that he's not. And that he's operating under the same programming you're operating under. 
find you a made a mule and a mattress, you find you someone you could love and be monogamous for the rest of your life and give you the pro false promise of love. In addition to understanding that's just the way men are, because when he cheats on you, you're going to have your, your church, your co church community telling you, don't let the devil in your house. Girl, if you, if y'all don't see the grip, I don't know what to tell you. I'm done. This is an hour video. You have another video that's about 20 something minutes that I think I'm done for the day. But cut the nuclear family shit out. Cut it out. Cut this idea out that stop allowing people to shame you for being a solo parent and choosing your children and yourself over being in partnership with a man. Understand that when they say that the single mother, single mother, single mother, that is a projection saying you should have a man around you. Single means there's no partner. That's what single means. You still a mama, but the single part is what's what's getting you hooked up. You're not going to be able to shame me for choosing my peace and sanity ever, never. And if the father of the children puts no effort into growing and nurturing and growing the relationship with their offspring, that's their fucking problem, not mine. Not mine. Keep me out of it. Don't don't try to shame me because I don't want the nigga under my roof, father in the home. I don't want his ass there. He can be a father outside of my goddamn house. God damn it. You ain't going to be able to shame me with that. You a single mother. So the fuck what? And I'm here and alive. Edges intact. They look they blonde. So don't look like that much edges there because of the same color as my damn head and my scalp. But bitch, my edges is here. Cortisol levels regulated. We about to drop this little winter weight that we put on. Honey, girl, I ain't got time to be worried about running out. And I just said that the other day. I was telling Nathaniel the other day, baby, I sleep in my bed like an X. Do you hear me? The shape of the letter X is how I sleep in my bed. And I and every now and again, I just be I'll be making some coffee or something, doing something. And I just think about how peaceful it is, how I'm not walking on eggshells, how, how I don't have to argue with somebody or have to deal with somebody who's just being disagreeable or just saying no, just to say no. I don't I, I don't I, I laugh and I chuckle like I feel so good that I can get up in the morning, walk out on my balcony, breathe in the fresh air, listen to the birds chirping, not worried about nobody but myself and my responsibility to usher these two boys into adulthood. That's my those are my responsibilities. That's it. I'm not responsible for another human being. I'm not calling no nigga my child. I'm not telling the community I have a head of house so there's a man in my house and some, I don't know what that's supposed to fucking mean. But honey, oh, all it means to me is an extra light bill. It's an extra fucking water bill, honey. Keep your ass where the fuck you are. Please stay where you are. My home is my sanctuary. I'm not coming in my home in, with my battle gear still on. I drop my armor at the door. I come home to rest, regenerate, relax. Remember, remind. That's where my home is for. Not it's not a battlefield. I ain't got time to be arguing, fussing, and act and, and then having and then somebody having expectations of you to be a goddamn server. Uh-uh. None of that. None of that. None of it. Yesterday, Sunday, I didn't, do you know, I did not make dinner at all. My sons made dinner. I'll make dinner. I'm teaching them how to cook. I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do. And I'm making sure that I'm not, I'm making sure that I counter everything they, their social programming has waiting for them and other men giving them poor advice on how to relate to women, even women giving them poor advice on how to relate to women. I know what they're going to be met with because you know why? You motherfuckers ain't changed your playbook. You're operating on old systems. I see it coming from a mile away and I know it's going to be waiting for my children. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to arm them with the truth and let them know that there are going to be men out there that's going to give them awful advice on how to relate to girls. Advice to even tell them to disrespect their own bodies. Mm-hmm. I'm going to counter everything you've been told. I'm also going to let warn them how girls have been socialized. Girls have been socialized to lose their identity in you. 
if you ever meet a girl and she starts taking on all your interests, let me know so I can sit her down and have a conversation with her and have her unwind her eyes at an early age and tell her, focus on herself and prioritize herself and her needs and make sure you keep your friends. You can like my son all you want to. Make sure you keep your friends. Make sure you prioritize yourself first. Make sure you keep your own interests at the center. Make sure you do things that you like instead of doing everything he likes and compromising and doing the things. Make sure he participates in some of the things that you like to do. Yeah, because I know it hasn't changed. And it's the same things you should be telling your daughters or nieces or any girls around you. Don't lose yourself in these boys. You, you are programmed to lose yourself. You are programmed to start performing in a way that makes a boy want to choose you to be his partner in the way that you run around trying to get a man to choose you to be a wife. It starts very early. Don't lose yourself. Have her come talk to me. I'll, I'll unwind her eyes. I'll shake her shoulders because I don't know what her mama is telling her. Her mother might be telling her, her mother might be a pick me and tell her to tell whatever he likes, you like. No, we're not. We, I'm going to unwind you. Have your, your, if your daughter tries to start acting like she likes my son, I'm going to unwind her goddamn eyes. I know what they're going to be met with. You know what they're going to be met with. Nothing has changed. Again, these people are operating on old outdated operating systems you have the manual just go pick it up it's a bunch of dust on it blow it off that's the same fucking book they've been working in for years generations so open the book and tell your children and arm them with the truth don't have your boys or girls out here waiting for these wolves to give them some fucked up advice on how to relate to each other arm them with the truth especially the boys and especially if you're a woman, because they've also been socialized to disregard anything coming out of a woman's mouth. I had to check my son the other day. He started talking over me. I said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. This is Nathaniel. Hello? What? <laughs> what happened? My lady posted that picture like three different times. With her and that man and, the, and them people? Girl's a mess. I talked about her earlier. I asked you. Is it a coincidence? Okay, bye. That's what we was talking about the other day. Nini don't even try to be funny. Her ass be funny as hell. Anyways, y'all, that's time to go. That was my time to go. Let me go. Take care of each other. Protect your energy, arm your children with the truth. Understand that the manual that these motherfuckers are using to operate is old. Like, like the other day when that girl was like, you old, you old, but bitch, I'm old, but you trying to tell the girls to operate on a system that's older than me. So what the fuck is it, you confused donkey? What the fuck is it, dummy? Anyways, I got to go because now I'm starting to call y'all names. I don't want to call y'all names. Take care of each other and protect your energy. Peace. Arm your children with the truth. And unwind your eyes, honestly. And and be ready. When you start learning this, you're going to have to release men from the expectation that you have of them. The same way you don't want to participate in the shit, you got to release them from participating in the shit too because it does, it's, it is killing them. They don't even realize it's killing them because their only focus is pussy and DNA duplication. That's all. But they don't understand that it's, there, it's closing in on them as well. Anyways, y'all, I got to go take care of each other, protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.